footy finals are back. G'day, I'm Isaac Heaney. No, wait, I'm not the greatest player in the AFL right now. I'm in fact Alex Donnelly. May have had a mini stroke 37 <laughs> times yesterday at the SCG. I'm your host of the AFL Today Show, which is brought to you by Top Sport. It is the home of footy finals. What a week one of finals we have had. As always, I'm joined by full-blown nuffs, I don't know, morons, up and about, and there's also the stats guy because, well, North Melbourne don't play finals. So there's the stats guy, Lee McCallion. <laughs> oh, well, yeah. Well, I'm excited for the women's, but yeah, the finals are back. I'm absolutely pumped. Uh, yeah, you're definitely not Isaac Kenny. He does not know how to grow facial hair, I don't think so. He's yeah. too beautiful doesn't for need facial to. hair. He doesn't need to. He's too nice. And over him. there, he's actually just got over here from the MCG on Friday night. It's Leo Malali. <laughs> he's got up and about. Let's go. Yeah, I left my car there. We'll pick it up in 60 <laughs> like days. Dusty. Yeah, let's go. How good. Footy finals are the best. Hawk ball. Let's oh, go. So good. Now, make sure you subscribe to the AFL Today show before we get started started get around this like i don't know the greatest footy show in the world it is afl today on youtube <laughs> afl today all your podcast platforms what is it aussie rules aussie today? rules on facebook yeah there it is aussie rules today on facebook instagram tiktok and x is just afl today i think it's afl today au on x but anyway we'll get into it because can you smell it <laughs> can you feel it footy finals are back it's quick look yes jack ginevan hung out with his pals on thursday night caused a bit of an uproar with anyone who's over 50 going, you shouldn't be doing stuff with your mates. You should be at home. Or, counterpoint gentlemen, yep. young dude spends time with friends to ease mental burden night before finals. Man, the way, go, when, man goes to pub. Man goes to pub. If, if, that, if that's the uh, the charge here, lock me up. Yeah. Because <laughs> what is the charge? <laughs> what is, eating what, a meal? <laughs> what, what is, my, my theory on this, and before we yell, get yelly about it, is he's, what, 23, 22? Something like that. Younger yeah. than that. Younger, he's young, yeah. okay. He's young. He's young. He has a bunch of mates who are going to the pub for dinner, and instead of, sitting, instead of sitting around at home thinking about, you know, one of the biggest games of his career, yes, he's played in the grand final, but... 96,000, 97,000, the MCG on the Friday night. Instead of sitting at home thinking about it all night, getting up in a tiz, goes and has, there's a delicious steak sandwich at the London Tavern, by the way. It's great. Uh, But I think he had the palmy. And he was home by nine o'clock after having a few waters. That could have just relaxed him and got his mind away from footy. Yep. I'm all for it. I don't, all right. I don't mind that he's gone to a pub, but why did it have to be that pub? That is like the biggest pub in Melbourne for the footy. He is a big, fat attention seeker. That's all he was oh. doing there. He could have gone to his mates. Can we just go to a pub around the corner from my place that's a lot smaller? No one's in. It could be around the corner from his yeah, place. Yeah, you don't know, you where, don't he know where he lives. No, nah, I do. Nah. <laughs> but, it's all, but it's also his mates could have said to him in the group text on the Monday, hey, boys, London, Thursday night for dinner. Who's in? Yeah. Yeah. Hey, you don't know the circumstances. All I'm saying is he literally went. I think he went there for a bit of attention seeker because he loves the t- he loves posting so on Twitter and things like that. Are you saying like he has said to his mates, "Let's, let's go, go to the London, London Tavern"? No, because he wants people to take a photo. But of he him. was probably 50-50 and he goes, "All right, if I go, this is he, he." He loves the attention, Guinea. He loves it. He craves it. He literally. I'm telling you, that's what I think happened. He's he a big the attention atten- seeker on the field, but mm, off the field as well. I think he loves it. He, it was a great Twitter post. It went viral as well. When he got home, he uh, that was pretty. Funny. Yeah, with the candle with and the, the candle and the, tea. No, I don't. I don't honestly mind that much, but I just think he is an attention seeker, and that is part of it. That's all I'm going to say. Jeez, I think we're all attention seekers. Yeah, we are. We, we are. We're, we're doing a show. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Please anyway. follow us. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, please follow us on all the social media. Jack Given, I'm a fan. Also, the wizard. Great and he's stuff. played well. So yeah. Yeah. Uh, we'll talk story. about that later. Anyway, so Tomahawk came back through the VFL, kicked one goal, three. Uh, Geelong got pumped though. Yeah, yeah. lost to Southport. Yeah, they actually had a big crowd there apparently for the VFL game because Tomahawk's back. But could be his final game ever. Could be his final game ever because one goal in the VFL is just not going to cut So would you play him in the prelim? No. Nah. Yeah, I, I would. I agree. I would. Shannon Neal has to tear his hamstring. Shannon Neal was great. And then uh, the only person that's coming back in is Tom Stewart. You don't want to make any other changes because yeah, they were awesome. Yeah, you, uh, you don't, maybe Sam DeConing. You, you oh, maybe. You yeah. don't mess with what's working, especially with yeah. that forward line. They're kicking goals left, right, and center. Yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. Uh, and in a shock to no one, <laughs> except for herself, uh, Kate Roffey, now the ex Demons president, stepped down. I mean, we no one almost. could have seen this coming after that train wreck of an interview with Jared Whiteley. Oh, yeah. my God. Who's taking Brad over? Green. Brad Green. That's Brad right. Green is yep. stepping in as, a, as interim, as mm-hmm. the interim uh, president. Yep. And then I believe that the long-term plan is for a gentleman named Stephen Smith who used to play for the D's in the 80s or 90s, I believe. Stephen v- Smith. Okay, very yeah. big uh, businessman around the world, apparently is in charge of, no, so if you see our president of a company in Singapore at the moment, he's stepping away from his duties there hmm. and wants to take 12 months off to travel the world because, you know, fair enough, you've done a lot. Wants to find himself. Well, not wants to find himself, but maybe <laughs> spend, some, spend some time before going back into that role. So I believe yeah. 
it seems as though there is change of there foot is a plan. at the D's and okay. this all goes back into the Petrarca stuff. It's probably yes. a good thing that there was just a, so much chaos this year, so maybe a little bit of change might, uh, might yeah. be needed. Yeah, I think so too. They need a complete overhaul. All right, let's get into it. Let's have a look at this finals bracket. Let's have a look at the early odds from Top Sport as well. So what we'll do is yep. quick vibes on the premiership market, and then at the end of the show, we'll talk about the two semifinals. So right now, the premiership favourites are the Sydney Swans at $2.90. Yep. Geelong, $4. Brisbane, $6. Brisbane. Hawthorne, $6. GWS, $6.50. And the team that is- Wait, really? And a team that is hosting a final this Friday night at the Adelaide Oval, Port Adelaide Power, $15. What? Really? They were horrible, but that seems it's a great, great odds with Top Sport yeah. if you want to get on, I, uh, on Port Adelaide, I'm, but that surprises me. GWS at 650. Yeah, yeah. that stands me. out. Because yeah. they For didn't sure. play bad no, at all. It's, like, they well, crumbled, quarter, obviously. But they've got yep. a home final. I don't understand why Brisbane are favourites. I thought I didn't think Brisbane that were that great. We'll get into that yeah, later, we, but we GWS were, yep. were fantastic yesterday. Yeah, yeah. They, they were great. Mo- like 90% of the game. game. Awesome game. To lose that is very unlucky. So I'm surprised. you $6.50, Top Sport. Not bad at all. I said before the finals, I think this one's what, 375, something like that before yeah. the finals. I was happy to back them, banking on them getting through to the grand final or the prelim. Yeah, finals, Swans are deserved uh, yeah. favourites, that's for sure. As we saw yesterday, their best football, you just can't stop them. Mm-hmm. Can they play for long enough? That's Yeah, they need to, they <laughs> they, need to play. They didn't, you know what? They are. <laughs> well, yeah, they, they have been, but just. Just. Yeah. yeah. One goal. Winners, winners win. Of course, so the Bulldogs and Carlton go home. Geelong and Sydney prelim finals. So Sydney play on the Friday night at the SCG. Uh, Geelong. More than like, will more than likely will be a twilight slot at the MCG. I like that. Yep. So that means that because it's going to be Brisbane or GWS playing that game, they can both get home that night. Yep. So that's great. Yeah. And that means we got uh, Port Adelaide Hawthorne Adelaide Oval this Friday night, mm-hmm. Saturday night GWS and Brisbane at NG. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I like yeah, it. That, uh, what, that's really good. I forgot about it. Yeah. I forgot about it being an NG. Yeah. But that's that's good for the Giants. Yeah. Their home deck. Very nice. They don't play finals at uh, Allianz Stadium anymore because it, they need what? like seven weeks' notice to reconfigure the stadium. Do they play a core at all? Like, no, oh, that's sorry. Oh, no, is that what Allianz was? Yeah. yeah. No, they, they don't no play more there. AFL. No. None. Just checking. Benito. Yeah. Done. Yeah, that was cooked sometimes. Horrendous place to watch AFL. Too, yeah, it's, it's just, not good. Just <laughs> rap. Not fair. Vent sesh. Oh. And fraud watch. Do we want to go with the vent or the frauds? Uh, I'll go fraud we'll first go fraud, and then we'll... Yeah. we'll end Port Adelaide. <laughs> fraud. Oh, fraud Adelaide. What a surprise. We've been saying this for 85 weeks. 85 points in a home qualifying final. What Did you hell? even bother turning up? <laughs> Once again, showing us you are July bullies. Like Essendon being April bullies, can't get to September. <laughs> Port Adelaide, they bully everyone in July. They get to September and they turn to water. Oh, yeah. We were trying to change the channel on the live stream. I thought it was a 2007 uh, grand final replay. What, what was going power on? Power Prawn Star is going to be fuming with Yeah. yeah. I think he's fuming with his team. We yeah. have a lot of uh, yeah power fans in the comments. I actually want Port to yeah. stay in because we, we get more comments. We love Port Adelaide. We love Port Adelaide. So, yeah, I, I hopefully they, can't they defend that forwards. performance. That was, no, that was fair. Yeah. Every Port fan, even in our comments, will be going, tearing their hair out over that performance. Yeah, well, we had the live comments come through yeah. and there were a lot of angry Port fans oh, yeah. in there. So. That should, they just, oh, I can't even talk. Yeah. That's just so, <laughs> I can't speak. I can't speak. <laughs> it's just not good. Not good. There you go. So, Ben Sesh. Should goal of the year and mark of the year include the finals, given that the <laughs> mark of the century and the medal that it's named after was taken in a grand final? Yep. Really? Oh, yeah. yeah. Jezelenko. Yeah, The was. goal of the year, and I read this this morning, uh, shout out to Code Sports journalist and Stats Guy's best mate, Dan Sherney. Yes. Uh, the goal of the year was kicked in a semi final or a grand final, I believe, that, uh, what it's named after. Oh, uh, okay. But n- so there are awards it, yeah. that are named after stuff that are happening in finals, but they don't include finals because we absolutely saw the mark of the year yesterday oh. at the SCG. I don't know about yeah, absolutely no, mark of the year, I but I'd say so. absolute goal of the year. I think his control on the way down. That was yeah. crazy. Yeah. That's, I'm not saying it wasn't up huge, there. Also, like, shout out to Jake Buckley yeah, for that, not Jack Buckley. Or Jack Buckley for making sure he didn't break yeah, it. Yeah, he sort of like the little hand there, grab yeah. on the way down just helped him flip Respect. around. Respect. But just watching it, and it was across from me, I was just like, that dude's never going to come down. Yeah, he was up because there. Because he got up, but it's the leap on the shoulder, and then he got the ride. Yeah. I think Annie's mark, yeah, is the best mark that can contend with Jamie Elliott. I'm still going Jamie Elliott's mark because I think that was more yeah. pleasing mm. to me. But but more I pleasing. think goal of the year, Jez's goal, when it's he's insane, getting pushed yeah. towards the boundary, snaps it, on it's the spinning the wrong way, left foot on the boundary. That that first goal of the game, as soon as Geelong kicked that, like, oh, Geelong might be on here. And that, <laughs> that is goal of the year. Like, why can that not be goal of the year? It's in a it, final as considering well. Considering it's done in season, like, as yeah. well, like, it yeah. is still a part of the season. I know it's like, oh, you, but there's, it's disadvantages to the other teams because they're not playing. If you're good enough, you play finals. Exactly. Mm-hmm. And, and if it, you're good enough to take the kick the best goal or in a final, take the yeah. best mark. 
So be it. Because the, when do they do it? They do it obviously Brown the week of the yeah Brownlow night, week of the grand final. So it's just up until the prelims. Oh, sorry, after the yeah, prelims. Yeah, but then, then, get, then what happens if someone like dead set takes an Ashley Stampy esque mark <laughs> in a grand final? Yeah. Like, because some could argue that, you know, it wasn't the most miraculous one ever, but Leo Barry in 2005 could <laughs> yeah. be considered a mark True. of the year for how he did do, it. Yeah, do you um, present it? This would be awkward because it could oh, probably no, grand on grand final day with the players, like, <laughs> yeah, the next to us the goal, <laughs> nah. goal mark. No, nah, you shouldn't do that. But I think you could do it to the prelims. And then yeah. at least you... Yeah, I don't mind that. I don't know. Because grand final... Like the people in the grand final won't care if they win mark yeah. a goal of the year. All yeah. the other teams are like, oh, we're not in the grand final. I wouldn't mind a mark of the year so, or a goal of the year. So there you go. Yeah, I think Isaac Heaney and Jezza Cameron are like, we've just missed out on 50 yeah. grand. And their junior oh, yeah, it's 50 grand now, yeah, is it? And the junior clubs are like, oh, we've, the junior clubs get 10 grand as well. So yeah. Oh, Yeah, wow. the Cardiff... Is the Cardiff Demons card? Whatever Isaac Heaney played for as a junior. And they've it, just missed yeah, out right. on 10 grand. There you go. Just on Heaney as well. Did you see um what his mum said? Yeah. He said, what uh, his mum said? She said, uh, on just Big hug! To, I want to give a big hug to uh, Jack Buckley for just helping him. Oh, yeah. that's nice. Yeah, that's, that's like, awesome. I think every like, even he said after the game, he and he said he's like, thank God for that because I was going to yeah. land on my neck. And even after the game, Buckley was like, you okay, man? Yeah, it was like <laughs> so, quick thinking. It happens in basketball a lot as well, yeah. where the players sort of do that. Yeah, but you but often can't think that quick. Favorite non Sydney Swans uh, player, Buckley. Well, favorite Giants player. Yeah, I gotta, I'm still sticking with Harry Hilmberg. Went to school with him. Yeah. Oh, nice. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. non Sydney division, Buckley, everyone else, Harry Hilmberg. <laughs> non Sydney. Yeah, non Sydney. Greater Western part of Sydney. <laughs> yeah, yeah. His name where Jim, Buckley, where, well, no, actually, I won't get into that. That's a different one. There we go. <laughs> I was going to say where Jim thought Western United and Western Sydney. Oh, okay, great. Don't worry. Good chat. Yeah. <laughs> Game wraps. Let's get into it. Thursday night, the Adelaide Oval. Oh, boy. Port Adelaide, 7 12 54. Embarrassed. Geelong, 2018 or 138. 2018? They, they could have kicked so many more goals. Remember when I said at quarter time this game should be over? Yeah. Yeah, I was right. Well, yeah, not at quarter Paul, time. Paul got in the lead yeah. in the second quarter. Yeah. But if Geelong, I said if Geelong kicked straight, they'd be eight goals in Also, front. if you said to me Paul were in the lead in the second quarter and then they lost by what, 85? They had one goal in the second half. That is one goal in the second half. Yeah. What was it? 14 to one goal in the second half. Yeah. They, they put the Oz kickers out in the second half. So like, what is going on? We just got to talk about like, the Cats. They just hit the ground running oh. and just absolutely blitzkrieged them. Just straight away, they kicked three goals, seven, and it's like, ah, oh, if this is seven yeah. goals, three, it's just pack her up, boys. It's yeah. done. Port. Name me one player that did anything meaningful. Uh, Hornet. Yeah, he, he had some. He did have some impact compared to some of the other. Not his stats, but he did have. I don't back him up ever, and I think he was actually all right. But most of their players were horrible. Touches. No, he would have had about eighteen, I reckon. But yeah, I don't know. I'm just saying Hornet because I just remember his goal. Yeah, That's he had it. a good goal, and he actually was. He was okay, but a lot of other guys could not. What about Charlie out. Dixon? No, Charlie Dixon. We have, as, I said, as, as I said on the live stream, time to learn Chinese, buddy. <laughs> that, what was he doing? <laughs> he had a shocker. Uh, Three disposals for Charlie Dixon. Yeah. Uh, think, Todd Marshall was Marshall fit. comes in, right? Todd Marshall was fit. He's a yeah. he's in his prime, a lot closer to his prime, like whatever you want to call it, to Charlie Dixon, who probably should retire. Yeah. As I said pre-game, a forward line that has Asava and Charlie Dixon doesn't scare anyone in the final. That's a very good point. I don't know, and I'm and this is me as the guy who saw his team get whipped by 112 points by Port Adelaide. Yes, yeah. But Asava and Charlie Dixon weren't doing much of the damage. Mm. It was a lot of the mids and yeah. the, like it's the, the Swans got crushed in the midfield that night. They play a little bit like Collingwood, where a lot of their goals, other than Georgiades, are going to come from their mids. And then mm. when their mids aren't having impact, like Butters, Rosie, usually they want to hit the score, but hit, kick one or two goals. When they're not doing that, Port looks and so got bad. Subbed out as Butters well. got subbed out. That yeah. didn't help, obviously, yeah. but. You can't, you're a finals team, you're second on the ladder. Yeah. When one of your best players goes down, you should go, oh, our depth is good enough to stay in this game. And they just were horrible. Yeah. Geelong did this without Tom Stewart. Just just as a casual reminder to everyone, Tom Stewart didn't play this game, gets another two weeks to rest and up. And just to have the courage to like list Sam De Koning as an emergency. I like, know. He's fit to play. And yeah. So yeah. Well, we don't need him. Well, he's been pretty average this year compared to last year. Yeah, but you'd, year, still, but you'd still have him two. in the team like yeah. if, if he's fit and ready to yeah. go. So just no. to say, no, hang on, we don't want to make too many changes. I think, yeah, just kudos for sticking with that. Like, yep. uh, Jeremy Cameron kicked four goals, probably could have kicked six. What do you have, four everywhere. goals, three, 19 disposals. Yeah, awesome. he was phenomenal. Uh, Manor from heaven. Just, yeah. goes, just goes to show my theory on if you win the VFL best and fairest, someone really should just go and pick you up because yep. you're probably good at footy, unlike some 18-year-old who like, oh, I don't know, maybe go to the VFL. Here's this 23-year-old that's averaged 35 touches a game. Yeah. Maybe well, go get him. I feel like some of the lower level, there's some players in the AFL that are sometimes getting a game, and then you've got the really high-level VFL. Obviously, it's a massive jump. We see that a lot when people dominate, but you might as well give it give a crack, especially was, the likes like Sean He had 23 disposals, three goals. That's his best ever game. old man from the final. Gold Coast that was in the VFL last year that just started killing. Sam Cloisey? Yeah, Cloisey. Yeah, he was from Werribee yeah. as well. Yeah, yeah, he yeah. was. 
Yeah. So they are you a bit filthy that North didn't take Manor because I know you didn't really have a pick in that range, but Barlow coached him for three years. Yeah. And now he's at North. Uh, they really close. Think that he would like yeah. make the connection there. That hey, we could use a small forward. Oh really? Yeah. Yeah. Of course we could. Manor would be the perfect fit. Perfect fit. fit. Oh, I he's the perfect that. fit. I didn't even think about it. Yeah. I'm sad. Again. Made you sad. I'm Sorry. sad. No, that's right. I'm back. I'm back. First <laughs> final. Twenty three. Uh, Twenty three touches. Three goals. Shannon Neal pops up. Kicks two goals. Takes a bunch of marks. Stengel nine was marks. great too. Yeah. Well, Stengel kicks four. But Shannon, I think the Shannon Neal performance is one to highlight because he's going to keep Tom Hawkins out of the team. Tom Hawkins 2.0. He's taking nine marks and kicking two goals. That's the perfect game. Tip. Yeah. Job done. Good. I yeah. think we haven't even talked about the best player on the ground was Max Holmes. When the when it was close, yeah. he was just doing everything, driving out of the midfield. Then you'd see him at halfback, driving off halfback. Mm. He was busy early too. Yeah. The, the most was, embarrassing the part of the game was when he ran out of uh, fullback on the kick out and took three bounces. Mm. Yeah. He, he was just electric and no one, there was no pressure. I mean. yeah. That was embarrassing. That's yeah. just, that, you just watch that play. It's like, ah, oh, this is, this is why they got destroyed. Yeah. Yeah. Like, Connor Rosie just has not been right all year. He's been poor. Jason Horn Francis is hot or cold, and Zach Butters looked as sore as anything. Yeah. Uh, well, so he got yeah got injured. He as went well, to yeah. hospital. He's been cleared, oh, but oh. it's like mm, don't know. Yeah, don't know how I'm feeling. They're gonna be. I can't believe they're fifteen bucks for the Premiership. I and can. And they're the home final. That is. I can. That's wild. I can absolutely believe that. Given the way go. they played last week. Ah, fan base is how they're feeling. Port Adelaide Four. is just like really again, <laughs> again, <laughs> again. So because someone said to me when I was like, oh Port, they just oh no, it was about you when you were just like Port always go out in straight sets. Yeah. And it's like well, I, I shouldn't have said always. They've done it yeah. a couple of times. But it's but also yeah. like we're just used to Port Adelaide losing finals in Adelaide. Yeah, yeah. They did it against Richmond in twenty twenty. That was a grand twenty one prelim. Prelim, yeah, prelim, prelim, yeah. And they got belted by the dogs in a prelim. They, they, they're now two and f- two and five from their last seven finals at the Adelaide Oval. Actually, not- I talked about enough that how they did not win a flag during COVID. Same with when Brisbane. They, when like, they finished worst, first I, one I, I, I still can't believe two Melbourne sides won the flag in, in COVID years. That was wild. And you were saying about their finals. They, like, had, they had home prelims in both years. Yeah, yeah Port, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, Port, so their last four finals, obviously lost by 84 to Geelong. Yeah. Uh, which we, I think we said 85. 84 to Geelong. Sorry. 23 to um, GWS. tsunami. 48 to Brisbane and 71 to the Bulldogs. That's their yeah. last four finals. The Bulldogs one was the, bad. But the Brisbane one, that was that was in um, Brisbane though, so. Yeah, but still, the fact that they're getting smashed so the, in all of these finals. Last, they haven't won a final in the last four times. Nope. The last time they won a final was 2021. Yep. Yeah, that's not great. But that is brutal. And yeah, they've had two 70 plus smashings in the last four finals. That's I'm just not good enough. And Geelong are just like, yeah, we're good. Geelong are like, oh yeah, we're back again <laughs> and we just want to dominate. So it's, they it, make a prelim every year or two. It's just, it's what we do. Yeah. That's what Geelong is. So my point, my point with this is and with Geelong, and it goes to the Swans as well for later, is teams who had their humbling moment at the right time of the year. Geelong got deleted by, uh, I can't remember, was it 67 points? Uh, well, yes. Was it, was it, was it that much? Less. 67 or 70 points, whatever. It was 60 to 70 points in around July, August. Yep, yep. yep. Swans cop their hundred point beating of now on four straight. Like if it happened probably two weeks later for the Swans, they're cooked. Yeah. They're cooked. Yeah. But it's okay. happened now. So Port Adelaide have cop their humbling now. Not a good time, Taran. Yeah. <laughs> Hawthorne had theirs against Geelong down the uh, yep. highway when you were when you were up and about and you got belted. Like yeah, you yeah. you lost a couple of games since then. But then you have a look like GWS. They sort of haven't had a humbling. No. This even year. that wasn't even like they played that they'll be no, no, they this lost. whole season yeah. I mean it's probably the two derby the two battle of the bridge losses before that Carlton yep. just terrible and Brisbane probably the losses to they were close losses but it was like enough to turn them around so mm-hmm. yeah anyway Friday yes let's go, go. Western Bulldogs 9862 defeated by the Hawthorne Hawkballers of 14 15 at 99. Go. How <laughs> good. I'm up and I just can't believe our year. Like It's still I, going. Yeah, what what's going on? Like, you were supposed to be like still not that good. <laughs> this is we near North and now we're in the best six teams of the uh, competition. Now nah, we were awesome. Second and third quarter. We just, we oh. were on top. We left four goals out there in the third quarter. We kicked four goals eight. That was uh, a bit worrying. I was like, oh, if they come back, that quarter's going to cost us. Like a us. Port Adelaide sort of come back. Yeah, they did sort of threaten it in the last, but mm. luckily. Nah, a just, little, only they, a little bit. No, when Bond got the goal, I was a little bit. <laughs> and then had the next, <laughs> and then had, but then Bond had that next clearance and yeah. bombed it from 65 and Norton oh, got Norton in the way. Oh, Norton touched it, yeah. But in that instance, they said on the on the call, it was right, Norton has to try and take oh, yeah, the Oh, yeah, yeah. But yeah. it's just like. If Slide, they, sliding doors, if moment, they really, kick that, yeah. they probably win. Yeah, yeah. Like you, you they were, they hit. were. I think they won the inside fifties in the last quarter because I think at three quarter time it was forty six twenty three. We were dominating. Yep. They got to thirty nine in the end, so they did push hard, but too late. 
Way obviously. too late, yeah. I did, we didn't have any passengers. Everyone was no, great. Everyone like, was, yeah. They, oh, maybe Chol. Oh, sorry. He oh, was like, horrible. He but was I love jog- Chol. He was like, jogging <laughs> sitters. He was jogging. There was, but he I, almost took Mark There the was a contest a couple of times where it was two Hawks players and then the small Hawks players like, all right, you're the big, you go up. And he's just standing there like, Ugh. like Chol, I, he's like, they got to win and you didn't even really need him to fire up. But he was so bad. My favourite moment he was when Joel he- and Marty played the exact same they game. They did. They did. My, my favourite was when Chol- Eventually took a mark, but then he shaked the kick. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, he was shocking. Nah, but, but you didn't even need him to fire up. So. Newcomb was incredible. Yep. Yep. Um, Sicily was just a man mountain. That was a, like, a Newcomb could, legacy I could, game I was calling it on Friday night. I could like go on about our contributors. Even someone like Nash, who you don't notice, but he like kept Bont quiet. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> Bont was playing on the half forward flank for periods of time. That's resting, Bevo, mate. Yeah. Bevo. <laughs> Leave him in the midfield. It's a final. You need He's your the- best player. He only had 18 yeah. touches and wasn't having a massive impact. Like, Chalor was solid and Richards was really good at, at times. And they were having more impact than Bont. But, yeah, you're right. You've got to put him yeah. back in the midfield. Can Western Bulldogs fans act like, if we do have any watching, please hit us up in the comments. <laughs> what, what's Bont's finals legacy game been? Oh, geez. 2016, surely he had one yeah, really good final in there. When he, against Hawthorne. Against Hawks. Yeah, was really okay. good. Yeah, he's had a few. And he's won a flag. It's not like he's some other players that... No, no, but what I mean is, like, for play. someone like... Of his level, I can't think of a legacy finals game. Mm-hmm. I'd have to go back. Oh, yeah, yeah, I can't think of off the top of my head. I know just you're saying. Maybe the prelim against Port, we'd have to see how we went. Yeah, in 2021. But, yeah. but when they win by 70 points, it's sort of not like unless he's it had like 35 yeah, and kick yeah. three, like it's a bit different. Whereas you think Christian Petrarca legacy final when he won the Norm Smith, mm. yeah, like those kind of things. Like, yeah, fair, true. Yeah, so I'm just trying to get think that. off the top of your head. Yeah, um, I wrote in here about the Hawks intensity. That 11 more tackles. And 90 more disposals. Yeah. So, yeah. like, the dogs just couldn't get near him. The dogs- They just swamped them. Dogs as well, their disposal efficiency. I know Hawks had really good pressure, but some of the easiest kicks were going out of bounds. Yeah. It was like the crowd, the crowd was so loud. It was like they were willing yeah. the dogs to kick it out, kick it out of bounds. It was like, like 70, 30. The the Hawks, Hawks, yeah. like, Hawks were crazy. everywhere. Yeah. They, the crowd was awesome. There was just chants and everything going on. Really biased. I didn't like the- uh, They were I think very talking, biased. Like, every time someone got to take a ball, I was like, yeah. he just picked up the ball. I didn't even think there was a tackle in there. There was a bump or something, but it was really good. Yeah. And then we got to talk about the whiz. The whiz. The whiz. Alex predicted it. How many did you predict? I said three, but I've also I also <laughs> backed him with our friends at Top Sport. Yes. Most finals Actually. goal. And he's leading. There you go. He's equal. Yeah. He's equal. Four goals That's for the whiz. The fact that he's kicked concerned. four in a final. Like, that whiz. was the best no crowd. From set shots? Uh, yeah, no, he had yeah. one from a set shot, the last one. No, no I think all of them were from. And yeah, they were. Yeah. Accurate from the set shots. The best thing out Love of the game, though, is the uh, area where they're all wearing the, the wizard hat. I didn't even notice that till after the oh, game. Oh, that was so good. And then he gets interviewed and Ginnivan's like, oh, there's a wizard hat that's fallen <laughs> on the floor over there. Let's chuck it on. And then, and then the wizard's wearing Classic the wizard Classic Ginnivan yeah. attention seeker. <laughs> <all right. laughs> no, that was, that was great. I think that was my favourite part of seeing that afterwards. All the what about when uh, Chol leapfrogged him? That was yeah, the best. Yeah, he did him by like two metres. I know. That was <laughs> he, he high jumped him. It was awesome. <laughs> he is like, yeah, he's pretty small. He's pretty, I, pretty, I say that, but he's even smaller than me, <laughs> so I can't say that. Chol's got hops. <laughs> he, yeah, does, he, he does, he does. He so, was awesome. Fan bases. Uh, Western Bulldogs, everyone was saying they're going to win the flag a month ago. They're the best team in the comp. They weren't even in the eight. Oh, so you can take all your stats and all your champion data <laughs> and just remember, you got bevoed. To be fair, though, if they were playing Brisbane or Carlton, they would have won. Don't care. Oh, that would no. that really bad. No, maybe, they would have beat. maybe don't lose to Adelaide by 10 yeah, goals. Yeah, that one cost them. That one cost them top four. Yeah, mm. uh, yeah, I, I agree. Fan ba- the fan, uh, fan bases are trying to make excuses. It's, th- this nah. is just... Mm. Dit, 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 dit. It's the same circle. Yeah. It's like, good, good, good. Oh, God, okay. Oh, we'll try something different. It's okay. Try the same thing over and over again. It's insanity. You've built this list. Your coach isn't good enough. Definitely. Mm. Yeah, definitely got humbled. And I think, yeah, maybe it is time for a Just quickly, what about Jamara, though? Did nothing. He was we didn't talk about appalling. That. Yeah. Scrimshaw, Scrimshaw was Scrimshaw awesome. kept him to eight disposals and had 26 himself. In but the also, first quarter, Aaron, Aaron Norton, I know he's kicked three, but he... He was... In, like, like yeah. uh, Darcy was worrying more than... Yeah. than Cody Norton. Waitman must have been a big game. Hardwick always dominates Waitman. But yeah. Cody Waitman, when it matters, mm. goes missing. I was worried about Scrimshaw and Jamara because I looked... Yeah. And they'll say next Jamara's week, Jamara's a lot more he's athletic, He's so uh, more athletic. But then Scrimshaw just using his body perfectly mm. every yeah. single time. A great. bad night for the... Tall forwards of the dogs, or even just the forwards of the dogs, just to go into their hole, and then you have like Kalshadir, Wiz, Ginnivan, and just like we didn't even talk about Kalshadir. Three goals, four could have had seven, could have had ten. What was mate. ER paying with top sport for the oh, most goals? Oh, no no price available. Oh, yeah, maybe not. He was, he was amazing. He yeah. he could, he's going to be an absolute star. He's already he's got to put on some size too. Yeah, yeah. Wait, he's first he's so player. Good. He's and like, then, yeah, we've already talked about Hawks fans. They're just like they're just right here. This is the epitome lads, of Hawks lads, fans. Lads. <laughs> We have won a final before Essendon. Yes! That is my Let's
Uh, well, 2015, yeah. Yeah, that's, that's a great comeback. I like it. There you go. Saturday. SCG. Here we go. Oh, let him cook. <laughs> I left Melbourne at 20 past 11 yesterday. Wait, that late? Yeah. Jeez, yeah, that is such a big day. I landed at <laughs> one o'clock. I went straight to the Bat and Ball Hotel. Very nice. Caught up with friends of ours from the True Bloods team. Nice. We love them and a bunch of other Sydney fans. Shout out to all the people who said g'day. A few of them also said they watch AFL today. So oh, hope heavens. you're watching. Hope if your hangovers are there, hope you're nursing them well. <laughs> you can enjoy the hangover experience with us. It's <laughs> worth it. <laughs> Walked to my first game at the SCG and I think it was about seven years. Yeah. At least. Nice. And then I watched... One of the most amazing games of football I think I've seen in a long time. One of the best games all year, wasn't it? It was, it was yeah. Mm. And it wasn't just because it was a close finish. It was a tight, tense battle Very all day. Very skillful. As the Swans win 13-10-88 to GWS 12-10-82. There is no notes in this section. I didn't put it in because I'm like, Alex is going to talk about this for enough, so <laughs> I I'll need, let him cook. I need to get one off uh, out of the way early. Lockie McCurdy, surprisingly tall. Yeah. yeah. Six foot four. Great photo. Friend yeah. of the show. Friend of the show. Friend, <laughs> friend of, the show. of ours. And also messaged me this morning going, hey, remember when you said Jake Lloyd should be dropped and Jake Lloyd has 32 disposals a goal and 888 <laughs> His running meters goal is awesome. Yeah. He turned back the clock, Jake Lloyd, yeah. Fourth highest meters gained in a final ever. Oh, two, I love meters gained. Two above him, Jason Johannesson, Christian Petrarca. What have they both done? In the final. When they both won Norm really? Smith. Really? Jeez. Yeah. Jake Lloyd for Norm Smith. Is that what you're saying? <laughs> no, I'm saying. The, <laughs> no, I'm joking. That's but, a Jake Lloyd legacy game. <laughs> well, Jake Lloyd legacy Even game. Even though he's like 30, isn't he? Uh, do we start with GWS and then get to the Swans? Because yeah. I think the Giants have lost this game more than the Swans have won this game. Uh, no, I reckon Sydney oh, won I think it. Giants weren't even that bad. Like, they weren't too sloppy. No, that's what I mean. They've lost the game because Toby Green misses a sitter in the first quarter. James Peatling misses a sitter in the first uh, quarter. Yeah. Like, they, they missed a few sitters throughout the day. And then they should have been up by more, is that what you're saying? They should have okay. been up by five goals at quarter time. Yeah. Like, the Swans weren't bad. But they just got a lot of the footy inside 50. Jesse Hogan took a, great, a good couple of marks, kick, what he kicked three straight in the end, but was sort of well held. Toby had a day to forget, sort of wasn't really near it. Uh, Aaron Cadman, phenomenal. Yeah, he awesome. yeah. he, he's showing why GWS gave up pick one for him. Yeah. Uh, three goals was everywhere. Uh, Tom Green was just in and under all day. 10 clearances, 32 touches. Bit wasteful with the footy, but when he's that in and under guy doing it, that's all right. Mm. Thought in the first half, Harry Himmelberg was having a blinder. That sort of got turned away in the second half. They did, they, yeah. They did a really good team job on Errol Goulden. Yeah, they Peeling did. was there, but there was all blocking well, you off were saying, the ball. Uh, during the week, how he just dominate. He still had 23 touches, but he wasn't as impactful. And no, yeah, they did. Not. Who was, who was playing a lot of those Peeling. in the last Peeling. quarter? He had too. 11 in the last quarter. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, they did yeah. really well on Errol. That's yeah. one, one thing about Giants as well. Up until that last quarter, I thought their back line was oh, incredible. Awesome. Like City could not get any sort of The forward entry going. was terrible. It was terrible, but you had Buckley and Taylor Great playing setup. the games of their lives up mm. until the last quarter. Well, that back, that, like, because we don't talk about it, Giants as much, like, obviously not the biggest club going around. Their back line is just elite. Yeah. Like, Sam Taylor's the best fullback in the competition. And then you got Buckley, who's so underrated. Like, He's every underrated. team would want Iden does Buckley. a very good job as Iden's well. Iden's really good. Mm. They're just so good one on one. But yeah, not in the last quarter, a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, it's a bit, um, bit loose. As sort of suggested before the game as well, Brent Daniels got absolutely towed up by Harry Cunningham. Yeah. So it was Cunningham Cunningham was on Daniels and yep. Rampy was on Green, was it? Yeah, sort of rotating around. So I noticed early on in the game uh, that Jesse Hogan was really trying his best to get on to Melican. Yeah, and there was fair just, enough. This, they were starting deep, but in, in the end it was McCartan that ended up on Hogan. And I know Hogan's kicked three, but I still think McCartan's ended up on top on, on the day there. Mm. Two of Hogan's ones you just couldn't stop because he's just – on the lead, Duke's out, perfect delivery. And his other one was a little skunky kick from the top of the square. Yeah. Mm. Well, I even thought Darcy Jones was awesome. He was he, phenomenal. That's the best game he's played. I know it was only, like, you look at the stats, you go, oh, 16 disposals nah. on a goal. But every time GWS the scored, he, he, he mm. was just there and he was unbelievable. His pace, he was, no one's catching Every him. time he got the foot, he was like, oh, this little... <laughs> every time he, got, he was so good, though. Like, yeah. And first final showed absolutely no, no fear whatsoever. Yeah. Like, this, like, this game was fantastic. They had the crowd silent. Mm. The, the crowd was not into it. They were into yep. it when sort of Patley kicks a goal in the like, second oh, quarter. Back. Yeah. Uh, getting up and about. There was a few very average umpiring decisions, I thought. Mm -hmm. GWS in the first half, I think three or four of their goals came from very soft free kicks. Then it goes down to the other end. The Swans don't get a, like a, a mark that's called nine times out of ten. Doesn't get called. They go down the other end and kick the goal. I thought the umpire in the first half was atrocious and Ooh. evened up in the second half. I know the Swans, I think the free kick count was 21 to 19, but, and that's in Swans' favor, but GWS's free kicks were more impactful, if that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. 
I didn't notice it that yep. much. But I know what you're yeah. saying. There was some iffy ones that did result in goals, which is annoying, but yeah. it's always going to happen in a final, unfortunately, because that, right. that happens. Let's get to it. Isaac Heaney, <laughs> quite possibly. That's one the, of the best. Yeah. The one of, not just the best finals I've seen, one of the greatest individual performances yeah. on a football ground. Yeah. Yeah. He won the Swans that give him every coach's vote, except maybe give, you know, Tom Green and Tom Green and Jake Lloyd like three. But give the rest <laughs> to Isaac Heaney. Yep. He was that good. 30 disposals, three goals, seven clearances, six marks everywhere. Like you could go through his stat line and go, oh, he's had, uh, was it six clearances? Oh, yeah. he's had 30 disposals. Oh, that's a great game. He's had oh, he's had tackles. three goals. Oh, that's yeah. another great like, You could take any chunk of his game out and go, oh, that was a great game. But then you put it all together, like, He's, he's just God. Like he, he just, he's, he's went God, God mode. He went he God, God mode. He's Saints, oh, Isaac Heaney. <laughs> Ever since he replied to that Instagram message of mine when I yeah. put up that photo, <laughs> Swans are unbeaten. Alex is taking credit for Isaac Heaney. <laughs> That's some self-insertion. Three <laughs> yeah, yeah. Give myself a vote on the uh, kind of, kind I of think show Alex next week. Heaney did shout out Alex in the uh, post-game interview, so... There you go. Shout out to that. No. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> wait, wait, wait. What? So, in right. what world would that be? Where's that the move? He, he's taken mark of the year, but then the goal. But it's not just the goal. The, the Yes, he's bombed it long from 65, but look at the separation that he gets on Whitfield yeah, when he sees it. Yeah, he's a little touch before oh, he yeah. collected the ball. Yeah. He's very, very clever. Underrated how important Tom Papley was to the Swans. I know he's kicked two goals, but he had a direct hand in another five. Mm -hmm. He had the handball to Amadi. He was involved in the spoil that got the goal for Heaney. He was then involved in another lead up link the chain. The spoil was huge. Yeah. That was yeah. awesome. Yeah. yeah. Uh, for Will Hayward to kick his goal. Like, the worries are obviously that the, the Joel Amadi did nothing all day. Yeah. He was well held by Sam Tarpon. He's been horrible. I, I loved his winning mark. goal because he was, he should have. Like he was closest to it, but he's like, Papley, you get no, it. No, no, no. And no so what he him. did, so it happened right in front of me. He's gone to knock Sam Taylor yeah, yeah, off he, his he line. Went to, he went to Shepard. And he wasn't going for the goal. Yeah, like but he yeah. bumped Sam Taylor because he sees it's Papley. He's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. But I'm, I'm gonna... saying he did the right thing. Yeah. But it was just funny seeing that because like on screen when I was watching it, yeah. I was I couldn't see Papley and I was just like, oh, Marty just run away. <laughs> yeah. And then Papley came yeah, in. Yeah, he's, he's, he's run to get Taylor off his line, which is the right thing to do because it's put him off, it's kicked the goal. I think I died. I jumped up I so I fast, died. my like I nearly fainted. I yeah. jumped up so fast. <laughs> High fiving everyone. The crowd went bananas. Mm. It was insane. But even through watching it, yeah, on TV, like I felt like my TV in my room was just shaking. Like it was that <laughs> it was that loud. It was, that was awesome. just an earthquake. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, it wasn't. <laughs> Chad Warner in the last quarter had seven yeah, clearances. He was big, yeah. The only seven clearances he had all game. Wait, Ended just in the last quarter, yeah. seven I knew clearances. It was a lot, but I didn't Thirteen know touches, mean. seven clearances. Errols wow. had eleven in the last quarter. I thought Callum Mills was really good. I thought James Rowe bought him in and under all day with eleven tackles was fantastic. Grundy worked into the game. Papley just showed how important he is. McInerney was poor. And Braden Campbell may have pulled the best yeah. substitution. We've even talked of the year. about him. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, he, Granddad died. Granddad on died. That's uh, horrible, but beautiful that he could come on and have an impact for them. And said it was dedicated and to him. Noticed yeah. as soon as he came on the field. Uh, ever since he's put on the, the black footy boots, oh. he's been on. I'm all for black boots. You're yeah. a, you're a shiny sort oh, of. Yeah, uh, I'm uh, Look at me, sort of boots type of man. But I like the black boots. He's zippy. Just be, yeah. he's there for business. That's what, he he, that's what he's there for. He, he was. He he was fantastic. Like. It was he. He was laying tackles. He took the big mark. Kicked the goal. He kicked, kicked the, the goal. goal. That the big mark from James Jordan. Uh, and then he kicked an eighty-seven meter barrel with thirty mm. seconds to go, mm. which it was the most obvious insufficient attempt to keep the ball in ever. Yeah. But it stayed in. Uh, and then GWS yeah, missing the target with yeah, 10 it was seconds Ash, to go. Right, missed yeah. the target. That last 10 seconds, they were like, oh, I was like, Alex is probably thinking, oh, no, here no, we no, go. No, I, was sort of, I, was like, I was like, go out, go out, go out, because at least. Campbell was rushing, if, and if it goes yeah. out, he can sort of man the mark mm. and kill a couple of seconds. If he if he um hit the target though, it was yeah going were, inside. Oh, chance. Yeah, they still had it, but they still think they've still got to kick a goal. To, yeah, to yeah, but it was yeah. similar to the Hawks game where the dog's like, oh, the crowd's really loud. Like, I'm a bit nervous. <laughs> yeah. The crowd was just screaming. Sydney fans <laughs> was just screaming, and he's like, okay, I could really the, hit the, the loudest cheer. I think was when it went out. Yeah, yeah, yeah he, it was. Didn't, he didn't uh, like set himself. He was nah. sprinting, and then was like, and then he's like, oh, option. He should have. He sort of went like, yeah. I think it was the right option, but he just needed to set him set a little bit. Fan bases. Fan bases are right here. Yeah. <laughs> this is the greatest. It was one of the greatest afternoons of my life. This could yeah. be the happiest you two have been on this podcast. Which uh, I'm, I'm yeah, happy. I've been happy. Oh, yeah. I've been happier, but this that was honestly. <laughs> are we happy? <laughs> what? Uh, I am. So, <laughs> I'm not. On my plane <laughs> home, I saw Dern, oh, I saw nice. Jason Dunstall, nice. Sarah Jones, and the umpires. Oh, oh, food! No, I'm joking. <laughs> well, I love the umpires. We don't have a game without the umpires, by the way. I just saw them. I was like, ah, yeah, they were all sitting up. Were the they wearing green? No, no, they're oh. all in like, their, their streetwear, but they were all sitting up the back. 
All right. Yep, well, Jason yeah. Dunst led a row to himself. Really? <laughs> yeah. Oh, just, just what, like, his legs like laid no, out. No, no. He was just he was in the corner seat, just like it was just like leave me alone. <laughs> Dern was just swanning. He sat in four A. He would have strutted, strutted yeah. down the aisle, I reckon. Yeah. Yeah. Dern, very nice. yeah it was great. Uh, and GWS are like. How did we lose that one? Yeah. They they were twenty three and zero under Kingsley yeah, I did see when that leading stat. at three quarter yeah. time. Wow, twenty three and one. The Swans have now finally beaten GWS because in the final you, and have won six of the last seven derbies. Obviously, it was yeah twenty three. You think this year they've had they had a lot of close games and then they just fire in the last like mm. ten minutes. You go, mm -hmm. wow, their fitness took over. They they just cooked it and uh, Sydney were just way too good in the last. Quarter. Sydney like bring it on two weeks. But do you know on. I don't I still think out of all the teams, sort of as the odds sort of suggested, they're. But they lost, but they'll still be a little bit confident because they're like, we played a really good brand of footy. Our game plan was really good. We just didn't capitalize. If they play like that against Brisbane, they'll win. Yeah, yeah. I think if they play that, like that against every other team, they'll win. Yeah. How good? Yep. Saturday night at the Gabba. Um, oh let's boy. hear from Jim before we get into it. Hello. James Clements from the AFL Today Show here. And where's he, might you ask? Well, it's certainly not the Gabba. We're at People's First. That's right. I've just gone, I'm so disappointed in my blues after yesterday that i'm just going to be you know rock up just hang out with jed walter that's my entire plan from here on out tropical gym is now going full tropical you never go full tropical but i just did i think um actually if the nbl blitz this happens to be the home of jed walter and my good friend ned moyle either way should we wrap up last night's game tell you what it sucked i don't think you should be able to beat you know any team in the top eight if you don't score for an entire quarter and guess what that's what happened Yes, the Blues that rocked up were the Blues that, guess what, again, didn't beat a team that was ranked in the top 15 in the AFL since July. So no real surprises that they coughed it up to Brisbane horrifyingly and made the five-year-old squid cry. But, same token, Doc was underdone, shouldn't have played. Chera, shouldn't have played. Where was Chinkotta? Throw Chinkotta on Zorko and away you go. TDK, he should have been out there the entire time. Pitto should just be shot into the sun at this point. Big Harry, if he had to kick that goal at the end of the second quarter, we would have been on, would have been on for young and old. Every Brisbane Lions fan there was absolutely packing their dacks. It was turtleneck time. But instead, Harry let him off the hook. The Blues still kicked the first go three goals of the third quarter and still ran a bit short just because they couldn't quite get their hands on the ball. It was really weird how they got absolutely towed after the first eight minutes of the first quarter, but not that weird if you've watched any Blues footy this year. Scrappy, gross, no real plan. Sitting Kennedy was a huge mistake to get TDK out there. TDK, he deserved to be out there, but Kennedy did not deserve to be the one to sit. They should have sat Durden or Motlop, who did absolutely F all. So, not great. Horrible coaching, horrible decision-making all around by the Blues. But yeah, should have been no chair, should have been no Doc. Uh, I'll tell you what, there was like a moment there as well. Pitto, there was two big key moments right in front of us on the wing. Uh, Pitto dropped the sitter of a mark that would have stopped a bit of a flow. It's a repeat inside 50 again. Instead, he drops it. They go back the other way, and I think they kick their first goal of the third quarter off it. And the other one is Ollie Hollands. Instead of taking a ball out of bounds, he uh, taps it back in, and it goes to the Brisbane Lions, and I think they kick another goal off that as well. So, shocking gear, but you get that on the big jobs. Bit of a write-off season in the end for the Blues. Injuries, you can blame a lot of them. But as I keep saying on the AFL Today Show, what actually matters is continuity and planning. Continuity, continuity basically is the key behind everything when it comes to footy. It comes to your team and to have what an entire third of your team coming back in, it was never going to work. So anyway, flag is next year. Squid agrees with me. It's going to be awesome. 2025. What do you reckon, Squid? Yep, 30th year, 30th anniversary of the 1995 <laughs> Blues. <laughs> Unstoppable. Anyway, good job by the Lions. They're going to get their heads kicked in by GWS though. Crazy gear up here. Tropical gym. At People's First Stadium. I'm going to go work out with Jed Walter signing out. Well, that was Jim. He's now at the Blitz. I did get the photo of the squid deleting a hot dog. At the, the hot dog was bigger than him, and that, that is a great That's hot a dog. That's a fair effort. That's a yeah. good hot dog. Takes so, after his old man. Yeah. He does. Yeah. Uh, so Brisbane, 14 15 99, uh, Carlton, 11 5 71. This doesn't tell the story. It doesn't. No, you go, oh, that's only, no, what, that's only four goals. Yeah. yeah, You go, oh, this must have been a close game. It must have been a good game. It was 60 <laughs> nil. The clean sheet was on. Yeah, the clean, the clean sheet was on. So you know how Jim says the Homer and the donut ship machine? Yeah, yeah, that was Brisbane. So I had, I was going to get social gal Spence because she's a Carlton fan. I was just really digging in. Be like, <laughs> hey, 
Can you please put up a post of Jim's face over Homer in the donut sh- machine going, you've been asking for donuts all year. You got them by ah, half time. 60 to zero. So the Blues are the first team. We're going to give a bit of a stuff for you, lads. Blues are the first team go. to go scoreless. And in a finals opening quarter since 1974, sadly, in 1974, it was North so Melbourne. So you'd be happy that they've taken Yeah, I remember that day that. like it was yesterday, yeah, 1974. Was no, but 60-0, to zero, scoreless first quarter. You just knew from the first five minutes when everything was going Brisbane's way. Yep. They are, I wrote down here, they just let Danaher and Rayner so free. Like Danaher, a couple of his goals in the first quarter. You made the grand final in 1974, by the way. Yeah, it was a great year for uh, the yeah, North. You got belted we got, by we Richmond. Lost, but it was a great year. No, not that I remember, obviously. But um, yeah, they just, Danaher's first couple of goals, it was wide open. Yep. I was like, oh, who should we man up? Maybe man up on Danaher, maybe man up on Rayner, the two massive impact players for the Lions. I'm just given way too much space uh, early on. And then, yeah, obviously they came back in the last quarter, which we'll touch on, but they were horrible, mm. horrible. And then everyone's they going- get could part, be- They couldn't get it beyond nah. halfway. Then everyone's going, oh, this is going to be the closest final series ever. I'm really had one good game, yeah. really. And uh, yeah, this one- brutal. I mean, I've enjoyed myself. <laughs> yeah, you've I've enjoyed honestly, yourself. You've enjoyed, enjoyed yourself. No, but like all four games I've enjoyed because for me, it's the result I wanted. Yeah. So I've had a great fair time. Enough. No, fair enough. Uh, where do we want to start with this? Like not manning up Dane Zorko? Yeah, that was interesting. Yeah, you got to, especially the Gabba. Zorko the Gabba is just electric do you, off half Do you back. not think that um, Adam Kingsley is at home after he's, you know, crushed a couple of uh, cinder blocks on the way home? <laughs> he's just gone, Dane Zorko's <laughs> not getting a free Bedford footy. Bedford back? Maybe, yeah. But they could send they Peetling could, to They him. could put Bedford yeah. on him, yeah, yeah. Bedford, I reckon yeah. they send Peetling to him and Bedford's on Neil. Also, is that the mm. biggest, like, blessing in disguise? Obviously, they would rather uh, Kitty Coleman, but the fact that they had to put Zorko back and he's been Australian off half yeah. back has worked like a treat because he probably mm. wouldn't have been, he might've had games off halfback, but he probably would have been playing midfield half forward still. Right? Yeah, I think. Yeah. And and his run off halfback has just won them so many games. Mm. Mm. It was sort of the full Brisbane, like Cam Rayner kicks three, Kyle Lohman two, Duckett's two, Charlie two. No one had to stand out because no. they just all dominated. The game, it was, the game was over at quarter time. Like there is no two ways about this. This game was over and, and Brisbane should have been a mile in front. They missed two goals. Why from can't like, they kick straight? What's going on? I know. It's, Humidity. Something in the water. The humidity. The humidity. Yeah, Definitely. 14, 15. I don't think they- But also they missed two goals from the top of the square. Yeah. Logan Morris missed one from the top of the square. Who was the other one that missed the one? Lyman. I know, no, no. oh, Bailey missed the footy. Bailey, Lyman right. should have yeah. kicked it, right? Yeah. Like, uh, had the goal. Is it kicked the goal? Yeah. It was- I didn't get this game. It's just confusing. <laughs> like, I also don't buy into Brisbane being a chance next week. Mm. No, the fact that uh, they let- I know the game was over, but they let Carlton get six goals in the so last quarter. Brisbane, and that's, a, that's not a good Brisbane sign. Brisbane are the number one scoring team in the second half. Uh, yep. First half, first sorry. half, yeah, yeah. They're number one for scores conceded in the second half. Ooh, so yeah, against any other team, Brisbane, mm. this could have been a lot closer, uh, and it definitely would have been sixty to zero. That that's just a crazy start. Now let me get to this. Just as a reminder, Carlton haven't been beaten a side that finished in the top fifteen since the middle of June. They yeah, beaten just, the top fifteen. N- uh, North, West Coast, and Richmond. Oh yeah, we right? talked about this last yeah. week. I forgot about that. Jim thought it was July, it's June. June. That's even. That's even worse. So it's horrible. Carlton, they rolled the dice with selection. That's a that's a that's a phrase. Yeah, that is a phrase. Yeah, <laughs> that's an interesting phrase. Yeah, roll the dice. <laughs> they stuffed it up. <laughs> Probably. Well, yeah, the score suggests. I've seen coaches get fired for less. Oh, I don't know. It's a final. You bring back Sam Doherty. Clearly not ready. You How have many T- coaches? You, you have TDK as the sub. Who once they come on, they score seventy points. You sub Matt Kennedy, who's been trying his guts out all year. He's not the player that you sub. I don't what? understand a big why, man as a sub. Why, no, that's why would you yeah. have TDK as the sub where it's like, have him on uh, yeah. and then play him till three-quarter time if, if, yeah. he's, if he's cooked? Even half-time if you want. Yeah, But not even that. Not, you don't do it at half-time. You play him till three-quarter time as much as you can get out of him. If you're in front, sweet. If you're not, you've tried. Because he was a difference maker when he came on. And I know probably Brisbane half put the cue in the rack there. But it's like you're bringing in him. The, we know the Pitney thing doesn't work. Mm. Adam Chera in off for injury doesn't work. They left Charlie Kernow off because he was injured, but they brought in Sam Doherty off, what, six months in an ACL. Everything that they did wrong was not right. Zach Williams didn't look right. Nah. Harry McCarty didn't look right. McGovern didn't look right. Mm. It was an embarrassment of failures from the selection committee and the fitness staff. Yeah, yeah. I, no, I agree with that. The, uh, you talk about like a barometer for Carl, and obviously Cripps, he just carries them a lot, like a lot. He had 30-something well, touches. He their first goal, Keep their he? first goal, they'll fi- fire it up. Uh, no, obviously not really because it was 60-6, <laughs> to six. but- um, I'd say one of their other barometers, maybe in their like top three ones that get the gets the team going, is TDK. Yeah, when they, when they were winning, he was getting like 20 touches and like 40, 30 hitouts, and he was just awesome in that midfield. Like an extra midfielder as a big man. 
And to have him as the sub, just dumb. Like, you obviously got Hawthorne, everything's clicking for them. They've got yeah. Bruce, a goal kicker. Then you've got Braden Campbell, comes on as an impact quick player, that we, can kick a goal. We, so, su- we put the yeah. bloke that was injured on, and he was clearly rusty in McInerney. Yeah. He had six touches and and genuinely looked rusty. Like, nope, see ya, Braden Campbell, like for yeah. like swap, guy yeah. that's fit. Whereas Carlton had, yeah, put in their big man, which... Even as a big man, it probably takes a little bit of time to warm into a game. Is it the worst sub yeah. call of the year? Like, it has to be, right? But it is, I, I think. can't think of anything else. That's, like, that's I, know, I know was it when Reece Stanley got subbed 10 minutes into a second quarter, but that was... But that was because they were getting smashed. That was they were getting smashed. He was playing terribly. Kennedy wasn't playing terribly. The whole team was. Yeah, you, you and Matt think. Kennedy, hold, let's also note, Matt Kennedy and his wife, gave uh, the wife gave birth to a child Friday afternoon. Mm-hmm. So he flew up after the birth to meet up with the team. So he's showing his commitment to the squad nice, and the team. Nice. And then you do that to him? You'd think <laughs> as well, there's a few other players you'd sub before. Fantasia, Durden. Uh, Fantasia. Durden, Durden was horrendous. Like, you think those get subbed more than... Yeah. And the thing is, oh, you're saying like you're subbing a small forward compared to a mid. Yeah. But Kennedy can play mid-sized forward. He's yeah. done it before. He can kick goals. Absolutely. He'd be more impactful up in the forward line than Fantasia. For sure. Yeah. Mm. Uh, fan bases. Brisbane are like, uh, I don't know. Yeah. But, don't, <laughs> don't know. Brisbane are like, but. Well, yeah, Brisbane, oh well, <laughs> we knew we'd win. We won. Bring on the Giants. I think Brisbane are really happy that their progression of the younger players, like Loman, Morris, like Ashcroft, at least was, really Ashcroft good was really good. Then you got Rayner just hitting his prime three goals again. They'll be really, really happy. But they're probably thinking if we played a lot of other teams, we wouldn't have had that 60 point yeah. lead. Yeah. And then we could have cooked that. Because the fact that it was only 20 something points is yeah. not um, good Michael on Michael Voss is like, oh, we won the second half by 20 points. Like, yeah, he was still 60 down. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Is, did he actually say that? He yeah. was, oh, why? Just, yeah, he's just like, give oh. up, mate. You're, he's you're like, done. He's like, oh, yeah, well, we won the second half on 20 points. Uh, uh, you know, the results say we're not as far as advanced as we'd like to be. Yes, that's correct. Because everyone talked you up as a finals team and a grand final team all year. Yeah. And I'm happy that it's uh, quieting out a few Carlton fans, but I, I am sad for Gym. He's gone all the way up there. Yeah. He was calling, he said it was tropical tropical gym. He was enjoying the uh, the weather and the like the gabba. So there you go. That at least there were some positives. Yeah. But I do feel sorry from over there. Like uh, me and Tazzy watching North against the Hawks. Not not good. Yeah, but at least you were golfing up there. Yeah, yeah. it's true. Yeah. But yeah, that was just the <laughs> North game was just a bonus. It was gonna be the original thing, but yeah, it was just a bonus. Yeah. Uh let's get to the tipping results. Oh, I don't want to do that. Someone here's a genius. Me. <laughs> four from four. You gotta start tipping well at some point, I guess. I tip, I tip I just, when it matters. I want it on the record that Alex changed his tip to Port Adelaide oh. when he said uh, when Stuart was out and you came over to me Aren't and you, you said, yeah. change your graphic, change your graphic. I said, no, it's already out. I'm not changing the graphic. Four from four, So baby. you should thank me for that because technically we, you tip Port. Can we give you a three and a half? 3.5. No. <laughs> because I don't know about that Ball one. don't lie. Results don't lie. <laughs> ball don't yeah. lie. Yeah. We're talking about tipping. Yeah, There's ball no ball lie. involved. Leo, three. Three, yep. Stats man? Oh, I'm, I haven't got a tip wrong in the AFRW, so I'm not ha- looking to just talk about that. One. one. But one. I was just happy to get one. I was like, oh, geez. Jim. <laughs> Donuts. I did stitch up Jim, though. He, he tipped Geelong, and I put I put Port Adelaide <laughs> in the graphic. But then I think on the show, he flip-flopped, and he galaxy-brained it and went He went for Port, yeah. So yeah. I sensed that he would galaxy brain. I'm happy to give him one just because he no. was a sad sad man up in Brisbane. <laughs> yeah. Uh, full credit to the boys. Best team of the round. Best team of the weekend. It's quite obvious. It's Geelong. Yep. Next it's, segment. <laughs> yeah, no, no. We can talk about it. Geelong. So. Everyone goes, all right, Geelong are underdogs against Port. Port at home, they're second on the ladder. The line went from 12 and a half to 16 and a half when Tom Stewart was out, exactly thanks right. to our friends at Top Sport. Yep. yep. And they just decided to go, <laughs> cute, 80 points. To be fair, you and Jim did uh, say, I was tempted with the line, but when that line went up, you're like, oh, Geelong still have a chance of at least covering that line. So that yep. was a really good line, yeah, with Top Sport. And then, yeah, no one gave him a chance when Stewart's out. Stewart is their most important player. I don't think anyone's arguing that. Oh. If you want, you can, but I don't, mm. I don't think anyone is going to argue that. He goes out and you go, and They still didn't even bring him to Coning. They yeah. obviously brought in Mullen, who he, he did well, did, he, did his job, yeah. and Atkins had to play the, that defensive yeah. mid-roll, so they, they covered it. Um, Not yeah. only did they win, they they smoked him. Like they, That's the best they've played probably this, all year. This, it just proved into my theory of I still don't believe in Port Adelaide. I want to see them do it till I believe. Like, until they genuinely until leave they the, cup, the cup. Yeah, I'm like, I don't believe it. No, yeah, I agree. And yeah, they've got so many good players. It's going to be similar to Brisbane, <laughs> a lack of this uh, this error. They don't have a forward line. They don't have a forward line, but even in lockdown, they had a decent forward line. Yeah. And they're just wasting such a good error. When you finish top two, you've got to be better than that. Sure. Koshi is drafting the termination. We're sort letter, of talking about Port, but a, a more than the best in the round. Yeah. Best in the round, Geelong by an absolute mile. Best on ground of the week. Oh, Very simple. It's one person, but we got to have three because, you know. <laughs> Diversity. <laughs> Diversity. He in man! Oh, he's wearing the T-shirt. <laughs> of course, I wore the T-shirt for that exact reason. I was going to do it. Honestly, best performance of the week. It'll be pr- possibly the best performance of the finals. Yeah. Yeah, he, awesome. he'd be leading Th- uh, yeah, the Gary Ayers Award for yeah, sure. 30, 30 touches, 
three goals, bunch of clearances, bunch of tackles. Goal, one of the best goals I've ever seen caused me to stroke out. Mark of the year as well. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, stroke, out? stroke out? <laughs> yeah, no, because like, you know, I don't want to know what you're I doing. I stood up so doors, fast, man. the blood just right. Like, the taste oh. of metal was uh, rising. <laughs> I could smell burnt, <laughs> burnt, toast. burnt, toast. burnt toast. Pat Cummins was like, you okay, mate? I'm like, nah. <laughs> Pat, it was great. <laughs> Pat Cummins was like, you all right. So was Tilly from the uh, Australian water polo team. She was having tins, having a great time. Oh, that's, that's awesome. And then there was, and there was the fixture guy in there too. The oh, AFL fixture guy's like, "Hey, you to fix the overlap." I'm surprised you didn't strangle him. You don't like, you don't like uh, the no, fixture. I was, I was in, I was there as a part of news, and I was, I was, <laughs> I was dressed up as you saw in the photo. Yeah, so. He's had a few beers. Why are you do the fixture like that? <laughs> <man?"> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Actually, met a high up from KO who's like. Don't want to overlap. I'm like, yes. Yeah, we, we like that. That's my like kind of guy. All right, stats guy. Oh, we've talked enough about him, man. He was awesome. But there's only one. This uh, is a bit left field, I reckon. Left field, but the Ruckman don't get enough love. I love a lot <laughs> of the Ruckman. the smallest guy. <laughs> so, oh, I used to play Ruck back in the day. <laughs> oh, just a few taps like this. Under sixes. Yeah, like, yeah under, under twelves. Uh, Lloyd Meek. Lord Meek. Yeah, Let's Lord just call Meek. him that. Lord Meek. I can't wait for Meek Mondays because that is Average. awesome on the uh, Hawthorne social media. Thanks for commenting again. I feel like they might comment if we get a bit of a, a Lloyd Meek special here. 23 disposals, one goal, five clearances. 46 hit outs yep. against English. Ooh, English is supposed to be one of the best ruckmen in the league. He is absolutely he washed this year. What is happening? Remember the stat I brought up a month ago? English hadn't won a one on one hit out contest all year. Yeah, yeah. that is. Absolutely wild. Meek just showed that he's gone past English yeah. in that, that yeah. ruck sort of battle. Meek's tap to Newcomb for yeah. his goal was incredible. Oh my like, God, yeah. that rule. When, when a ruckman can have that impact where they're just directly assisting yeah. people for goals, that is an awesome game. And the fact that he got 23 disposals and clearances and just did a bit of everything. He was an extra he's midfielder. A man, man, and he's man, massive. Man, yeah. He's just, he was the biggest guy on the ground, yeah. but it's a gentle giant as well. He's a gentle giant. You Lovely guy. You just reminded me of a stat because I had a bunch of stats going through my head. Nice. So Dane Rampey kicked his second goal in, in sec like two games in a row he's kicked a goal. And that was his third goal in eight years. But the last six times Dane Rampey has kicked a goal, the Swans have won. Yeah. Oh, there we go. That's a barometer. That yeah. is a barometer and a half. Yeah. It's Put a, it at full forward. Yeah, yeah. The only problem was he hadn't kicked one in eight years <laughs> before the Adelaide game. That is like, that's his 250th next week. That is well, It's Bruce's 300th next week as well. Oh, oh there you go. All right. Who's next? <laughs> oh, no, next up, John Newcomb. Yeah, fair. His, Anouk. his third quarter was insane. Like To be fair, I could have given it yeah, to Sicily. I could have given it to like someone like uh, Max Holmes as well. Yeah. It was great for Geelong. Mm -hmm. But Newcomb, I just thought in the middle, like, Everyone like everyone sort of sort of goes to the bond. The eyes go to the bond and like Libba. But Newcomb, he was the best midfielder on the ground that oh, night. Yeah. As I said, the third quarter, he was in and under. His hands were so clean. I think there might have been a few throws in there, but Oh, that's a revenge that, against the dogs. That's revenge against <laughs> the dogs. Mm -hmm. Um and yeah, like he was just so clean in and under. His goal was epic and he knew as soon as he got uh, kicked. Yeah, it, you love those. He ones. just started running off and everyone was getting around him. Yeah, he was great. Hmm. Yeah, no, good call. So I know it is Dane Rampy's 250th in the prelim and Heaney's 200th. Ooh. Celebration day. Rampy for forward. He's got a bit of money. <laughs> Heaney fullback. Heaney for no, definitely He not. can do anything. Yeah. <laughs> no Old mate, no mates. Oh. Who's got no mates this week? Stats guy, you're looking at this a little Stats bit guy. differently. <laughs> no, you, you've got mates. Oh, wait, yeah, 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 yeah. He does. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're you stats guys. guys, mate. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. But that's what we like. We may rag on stats guy. That's because he's our stats guy. If anyone else did it, we'd fight them. Yeah, yeah. I want to fight you guys too. So bring it on. Big. <laughs> you go. Am I going first? I hate to do this. North Melbourne legend Jason McCartney. Obviously, uh, I absolutely loved him at North in the long season thing like that. But it was a bit awkward and a bit weird this weekend. Uh, obviously, when there was a bit of scuffle ha at quarter time. Quarter time. He's an official and a, a assistant coach at the Giants. He, he bumps. Sicily with his big chest. He's a big man Pat now. Sicily. I'm oh, sorry, Pat, why did I say Sicily? <laughs> You're looking at the Hawks guy. Yeah, I am. Yeah. Hawk, hawk ball is hawk. just in my in my yeah. brain. No, Jason McCartney bumps straight into Papley. Giving him a mouthful too. Giving him a mouthful. I, I don't mind him giving Papley a mouthful, but the fact that he's done that as a coach, oh man, no man, everyone in the Giants coaching box, when they're walking up, says, going, mate, why'd you do that? That's yeah. just unnecessary. Embarrassing, especially when you've gone on to why, lose the game. Why is, the, why is he as an administrator, coach, yeah. whatever he is, on the field, in that way, isn't he away? Obviously a bit of white line fever, but just old mate, no mates, because even some of the players are going, oh, that's a bit embarrassing. Like, you wouldn't want to see that as your coach. Maybe you can say a few words, but the, the bump as, like, Papley's walking past is so unnecessary, so he's uh, my old mate, no mates. Well, yeah. I've gone with Matt Kennedy just because oh. he got subbed out in the second yeah. quarter. Not his fault. <laughs> well, he's got no mates because he's just sitting there on the bench, no on the back of the bench, <laughs> no one's talking to him. He's looking furious at the, at the decision of being subbed out. And yeah, he just shouldn't have been subbed. He's a way more impactful player than a lot of other players on that team. So yeah. Maybe he doesn't want to be mates with him. That's the other one. Yeah, just... He might get trade watch, I reckon. <laughs> I was just no, saying, no, I'm genuine. Genuine. Could, be, could be that new dad stuff. He's already tired. Oh, maybe. <laughs> maybe. Well, for Crippo, it was... Uh,
Oh. Went missing once again. Poor. 12 touches, yeah. two behinds, missed an absolute sitter. When you lose a game by a goal, that's what happens. Against the Swans this year, he has kicked one goal. Right, really? One goal, six. I predict he's the best player in the finals. So that's, no, that's not our goal yeah, too yeah. well at the moment. Yeah, he's still got three finals to go, lad, so it's all good. Potentially. It's all good. Uh, no, what I can't stand this week. It's been awesome. Yeah. You guys are too positive. I'm gonna, we'll keep the vibes up and we'll. Uh, nothing to complain about. Nothing to complain about. Mm. Yeah. Uh, they kicked the kids off the uh, the SCG very quickly after the siren yesterday. They had kicked a kick oh. after the game. They only gave him about 10 minutes. Nah. There you go. There Stuff you go. That's what I can't Stuff. stand. <laughs> All right. Thanks to our friends at Top Sport. Let's have a look at... We've already looked at the premiership odds, but futures? Uh, we don't have the, the Gary Ayres medal. That they may come out tomorrow as we're recording this on Sunday because yes. right now they may need to recalibrate over the weekend and do that. So check that out. I think before the finals, we said Tom Green, he may have get, got a vote. We talked about Isaac Heaney. Luke Parker definitely not going to win it. Uh, you said Jezza. Jezzo, yeah, for most, Je most goals. Yeah, yeah. Jezza's up there. The Wizard for most goals is up there. So I've had a decent start there. So to make the grand final right now, Sydney Swans a buck seventy, Geelong are a dollar eighty five, Giants and Hawks three bucks, Brisbane are four dollars, Port are five fifty. So you have a look at that. GWS are three dollars, but they're six fifty to win the flag. Mm. I don't mind the, the GWS three dollars because I think they'll take care of Brisbane. Yeah, this this I Saturday. So. I think the the best bet out of there is I know it's in the middle, but yeah, at three bucks for the Giants is really good. I know that yeah. they're the best team I think that's in those semifinals yep. because you go Port just too cooked, and then Hawks you're just not sure if they can keep it up. But we've been yeah. saying that all year, yeah, so true. I don't know. That's pretty good. Once again, these odds are thanks to Top Sport, the home of footy finals. All right, quick vibes and thoughts for the two finals this weekend. Port Adelaide two dollars thirty six plus eight and a half. Hawthorne $1.58. Now we are $1.58. We were $1.62 when we started the pod, by the way. And really? We, yeah, now we're going to put $100 bucks on it. <laughs> no, no, I'm just put a... <laughs> I can't believe we're $1.58. That is wild. I think this is very reactionary, and I think it's going to be a lot closer Hawks than Hawks cover the line. Yes. Hawks cover, what's the line? Cover the, eight eight, we think we're winning more than. Yeah. I reckon you win by 30. Oh. Very reactionary. Um, oh, that's all I'm saying. Stats man, quick thoughts? Uh, I agree that it shouldn't be that much, but I agree. I think Hawks should be favourites, but it should be more like $1.80, but. Yeah, there you go. If you if you think Porter the better team at finals, two dollars thirty six is a crazy. That's, yeah, I think they're going to cover the line of the eight and a half, but I, I'd be tipping. The yeah, Hawks. I'd go Porter at the line at the very least. Yep. GWS a dollar seventy two minus four and a half. The Lions two bucks ten, of course, plus four and a half. That feels about right. I yeah. think that's fair. That uh, should be the odds of the other game. I think. No. Nah. Yeah. I think GWS win that. I I don't mind Brisbane at the line. I reckon it'll be close, but yeah. yeah. No, I'd be. It's, yeah, a, close, it's a tight. It's line, a tiny though. line, so I'm going Giants minus four and a half at home. They'll yeah. be fired up. They played. Arguably one of the best, like, sorry, the best footy of the weekend, and then they still lost. So yeah. I think they'll be fine. I think up. I just go back to that game at the Gabba where it was uh, the Giants came back, and they obviously won more than what the line suggests. But I don't know. I think it'll be tight and congested in this one. Yeah. yeah, okay. Cool. Don't mind it. All right, make sure you check out Top Sport for all of your footy finals odds. We'll update them later in the week on the Midweek Madness yep. Show, and you dudes will run through it with Jim on Thursday. Absolutely. All right, that'll do AFL today for, well, Today, uh, thanks to Leo for jumping in. Thank you. Go, Hawks. Let's yeah. go. Stats guy, you've got to get to Arden Street. Uh, yeah, possibly. Watch, yeah. Uh, watch the uh, women. Yeah, yeah, we're gonna the kill women. It. The women, I said. The women. The, the AFLW. AFLW. Uh, North Melbourne, Geelong. Yep. I'm going to jump in the car, head down to Moorabbin for the Swanson oh, Kilda game. That's nice. going to be a bunch of fun. I am what so time's that tired. What time that 3.05. I think Alex has travelled more this week yeah. than actually non, not travelled. Oh, mate. Right. So let's see. Uh, uh, witchy Proof Wednesday, Sydney <laughs> yesterday, Moorabbin today. Yeah, it's been a big week. That sounds like a segment. Witchy Proof Wednesday. Kilda is going to be a good game yeah, too. That's Both why teams coming off great wins. Looks yes. like it's about to rain though, so I don't like that. Hopefully uh, the media centre's covered it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, but please remember to smash a like across the socials to see us doing some awesome stuff and filling in your footy gaps throughout the finals. Of course, YouTube, where this show is housed. Give us a thumbs up there, subscribe, jump in the comments. We'll reply to those comments. We always do. Facebook, Aussie rules today. Instagram, TikTok, and X at just AFL today. Of course, AFLW today. Big show coming up tomorrow. Wrapping up round two of the AFLW. Hawthorne are just good. I hate it already. Like, <laughs> yeah, honestly, dominated. Can you guys just grow up? Like seriously. <laughs> what is this new saying? You so, say grow up. He, 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 he went off on Twitter for saying grow up about a few different things. Mason Cox and a few other ones, and now he just says it all the time. That's his saying. Yeah. It's, it's, it's funny, but yeah, it's gonna yeah, get off. I'm getting sick of it myself. Yeah. <laughs> anyway. Grow up, mate. Make sure you get around uh, football today, EPL, 
uh, coming back next week. Uh, of yes. course, the international break this week because the international break is what we needed after Euros all summer uh, <laughs> and the Olympics. NBA Australia is on a bit of a hiatus at the moment. NFL Australia is up and running because the NFL is up and going right now. Yep. Uh, what else have we got? Hold all tickets coming your way. We'll also check out the Race in Victoria series that I've been doing. That's the yeah. stuff I've been traveling around the countryside yeah, awesome. for. The third episode should be out next week. We've got episodes one and two out at the moment. They're good fun. I have one more to do. I don't know when or where I'm doing it, but I've got to do it in the next two weeks. But anyway, get around him like, I don't know, the squid and that hot dog last yeah, night. He yeah. absolutely deleted that tip. massive hot dog. So <laughs> shout out to Jim Jr. We're not giving out his real names here. <laughs> uh, but anyway, that's it. We'll catch you later on in the week. Big shout out to Geraldo behind the camera. So Wednesday for the Midweek Madness. Journos will be coming on the show, I'm pretty sure. And then, yep. of course, Thursday for the teams. And then we'll be back again Sunday to wrap it up the stop. finals. Oh, we love it. Until another month. We love it. <laughs> We've got the dub, mate. We've got the dub. But anyway, <laughs> that's it. We'll catch you later this week for more AFL Today. Till then, look after yourselves. And remember, final footy is back. What are you really gambling with? For free and confidential support, call the number on the screen or visit the website.